Hello, I'm Keith R.A. DeCandido, and this is a reading from A Furnace Sealed, which has been recently reissued by Eastbeck Books in anticipation of their publication of the brand new second book in the series, uh, which is called Feet of Clay, spelled F-E-A-T. These are the first two books of what I hope are many in The Adventures of Brom Gold, the urban fantasy series set in the Bronx, New York. Uh, this is part, Feet of Clay is part of a huge crowdfund by Eastbeck called Something for Everyone. Uh, this campaign has seven books, seven books, as part of it, Feet of Clay being one, of course. Uh, others including a steampunk novel by F. Deal called Eros et Eros, which is the sequel to Esprit de Corpse. Um, uh, Christine Norris is the other steampunk novel. It's uh, A Curse of uh, Time and Vengeance, which is the sequel to A Curse of Ash and Iron. Well, it's not an exact sequel, but it's the next book in the series, anyhow. Um, Ty Drago is also kicking off a new superhero stories, uh, superhero series excuse me, called Checkmate. Uh, and then, besides those four novels, there are three short story collections. Uh, one by Christopher L. Bennett, which is mostly science fiction. Uh, one by Christopher J. Burke, which is uh, all kinds of different things. Um, and then one by Lisanne Norman, which is pretty much entirely fantasy. Um, the uh, Chris, uh, Bennett, Christopher Bennett's is called Aliera's Descent and Other Stories. Christopher J. Burke's is called A Bucket Full of Moonlight. And uh, Lisanne's is called uh, The Pharaoh's Cat. And you can... Uh, get any or all of those books uh, and one of the things you can do is get both A Furnace Sealed and Feet of Clay together uh, as part of the crowdfund and to encourage you to do that I'm going to read you a bit from A Furnace Sealed so here goes I drove over to Jerome Avenue the Ford train ran elevated over Jerome from Bainbridge Avenue all the way down to 170th Street and that subway meant that there were tons of shops all up and down the street the one I wanted was one of about a billion little shops that sold newspapers, magazines, candy, cigarettes, and lottery tickets, located on the corner of 193rd. Like a lot of them, it catered mostly to people coming on and off the four train at the, King the Kingsbridge Road station a block away, or going into or out of St. James Park across the street. Well, okay, they catered, catered to another clientele, but we weren't interested in anything on or under the counter on the left as you came in in the narrow shop, uh, that had bulletproof glass protecting the guy behind the counter. Currently a Pakistani guy who nodded high and waved at me back. One of these days I really needed to get the guy's name. We didn't want the magazines and papers that took up the entire right-hand side wall either. No, we went past those. I went past the big rack of greeting cards that led blocked the view of the back wall, including the door that led to the steep metal staircase that went down to the basement. Downstairs was a Hanjan's magic shop. The man himself wasn't in. His nephew, Madawi, was and he was talking on the cordless phone. He waved at me as I came down the metal stairs. The place was dank, lit only by crummy fluorescent lights, since there weren't any windows. Nah, he ain't here, Madawi was saying. Unlike his uncle, he was born in the Bronx, so he didn't, he didn't have a Hanjan's thick West African accent. It's Sunday, he's in church. Nah, I ain't telling you what church. What, you telling me you found Jesus now? Bullshit. Just give me the message, I'll let him know when he gets back. I don't know when. I ain't found no Jesus neither. Besides, you know how he likes talking to folks. Could be ours. <laughs> yeah, well, fuck you too. Shaking his head, Madawi pressed the end button on the phone. Another satisfied customer? Madawi snorted. <laughs> yeah, something like that. What you need, Gold? I need to talk to Ahanjan. He really in church? Hell no. Only time his ass goes into a church is to deliver their holy water. I blinked. Wait, churches buy holy water from him? They do if they want the shit that works. Well, I hope his holy water smells better than his talisman to stop a unicorn. Madawi frowned. What, it didn't work? I smiled. It worked fine. When I activated it, it smelled like a moose fucking a dead octopus. Yeah, well, you want the shit that works, it's gonna stink. I thought about reminding Madawi about what Belez had said, and then decided it wasn't worth it. Besides, Madawi was just the hired help. Hanjan was the one who put the talismans together, so if I was going to get him not to stink up the place, I needed to talk to him. Still, I finally said, I've had some complaints, the first being from my hooter. I pointed to my oversized schnoz. Madawi chuckled. Look, I'll pass it on, but you know my uncle. I do indeed. I also noticed that Madawi hadn't actually answered my question about when Hanjan would be back, which led me to think that he either didn't know or couldn't tell me. Whatever. I had a binding spell to stop. Hey! 
I want to double check. What would be the components if you wanted to cast a binding spell on a Loa? That got me another snort from a Dowie. A thing of lipstick so you can kiss your ass goodbye. Who'd be stupid enough to do that? Woman over in Seton Falls Park, apparently. Shaking his head, Madawi said, Well, there's lots of binding spells, but if you want to bind a loa, you're going to need an obsidian candle, thick rope, red ribbon, and sandalwood. I winced. Except for the candle, that was stuff you could get over the counter any place. Hell, you could probably get all that at Target. Does it have to be an obsidian candle, or can any black candle do it? Depends. On what? Do you want the binding to work or not? Ask a stupid question. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Madawi. And tell your uncle, Moose fucking a dead octopus. You got it. I grinned. Thanks. And that's a bit from Feet of Clay. Uh, I'm sorry, from a Furnace Seal. Or, uh, I read a bit from Feet of Clay in another video, which I'm sure you can find somewhere. Um, anyway, uh, hope you enjoyed that little bit of uh, Brown Gold, Courser, uh, a supernatural hunter for hire, uh, visiting his local magic shop. Uh, there's lots more in there, including his attempt to stop the Loa from being bound, which sort of succeeds, except not really, and uh, <laughs> uh, and all sorts of other fun stuff that happens, including unicorn wrangling, werewolf minding, and trying to find out why immortals are being killed. So check it out. Check out the Kickstarter. Check out eSpecBooks.com. Uh, check me out at decantado.net, and keep reading. Thank you.